Hello everyone. Welcome to our unit our new unit, unit three on cell communication. Um, this first section of our new unit is gonna focus on the types of communication that cells have. Um, but before we get into that, let's talk about what cell to cell communication is. Um, it is a critical function for the survival of cells. It's gonna be responsible for growth and development in multicellular organisms. This tells us, for example, with mitosis, when to divide in mitosis. So when can we start dividing? When can we start making new cells? Um, this is also responsible for fighting disease. Once a virus or a bacteria enters our body, um, we will have certain cells that are going to recognize that these dangers are here. And so what's going to happen is that the body is going to start doing playing this game of telephone and they're going to start messaging each other, calling for backup um, and until eventually the, that disease or that virus gets taken care of by the body. So we're going to have three types of communication. These are the three main concepts that you should take away from this specific video. We're going to have direct contact, direct contact. We're going to have local signaling. And we're going to have long distance signaling. And as I think you can assume, this is going to go from shortest length to dis longest length. Short distance to long distance. E. So let's talk about the first one, direct contact. Um, this is when there's communication through uh, cell junctions. And what a cell junction is, is gonna be dependent on the type of cell that we're talking about. So if we're talking about animal cells, we will be talking about gap junctions. But when we're talking about plant cells, we're talking about plasmodesmata. And basically, these just act as barriers or like bridges between cells. Um, if we're looking at a plant cell right here, let's change this to red. So we're going to see that we have this, um, this pathway that, that's going to connect two cells. This little bridge right here, that is the plasmodesmata. Uh, we talked about this in the last unit, and this is an important feature for signaling in plants. And so how this works is that we have these things called signaling substances, and they could be a variety of things. They could be ions, they could be hormones, they could be ligands, they could be enzymes, it could be a, different, a lot of different things. But these are substances um, and other dissolved mater material in the cytoplasm that can freely pass between adjacent cells. And so what's going to happen is that we're going to have, let's say this is the inside of the cell. Oh, this is one cell right here. This is one animal cell. And here's another. What's going to happen is that these gap junctions right here, I'm going to highlight this again, gap junction, this channel is going to allow for information to go from one end to the other or vice versa. One example of direct contact in cells is with um, antigen pre presenting cells in our immune system. Um, we're going to call these APCs, APC, and with immature T cells. T cells are responsible for fighting, like doing like the like the actual like hard work of fighting diseases. Um, they are generally just turned off and they're called immature T cells because we don't want them on. Their life, their lifespan's pretty limited when they are on. So we like to keep them off, turned off, until we actually need them. And so to turn it on, to turn them on, we need a certain um a key, an antigen, an antigen. And so what we're gonna see is that we're gonna have this immature T cell right here. It's gonna have a receptor. Whoa. It's going to have a receptor, this purple like Pac-Man hand looking thing, and it's waiting for a certain antigen. And so what's going to happen is that this APC cell is going to provide that key that is going to turn on the immature T cell. So this yellow thing that I'm circling is the antigen. 
And what's going to happen is that once you turn on the immature T cell, it's going to become mature. And it can become one of two types. It can become a mature T cell, mature helper's T cell, which is helps with fighting like the war. Helps. Just a helper. Pretty self-explanatory. Or we can get a mature cytotoxic T cell, which is more like an assassin. And more specialized. The next type of communication is short distance communication. Um, this is like kind of like going down the block, um, maybe to the next classroom around the corner. Um, it's not too far from the from the who the target cell is not too far from the the original cell. And so what's gonna happen is that we're gonna have local regulators. A secreting cell that's gonna release a chemical messenger. So like uh, messages, like a local regulator or a ligand, that's going to travel through a short distance through an, the extracellular fluid. The chemical message or messages are going to cause a response in the target cell. And we're going to have two examples, pancreas signaling and synaptic signaling. And we'll talk about those right now. And so with pancreas si signaling, um, this involves the pancreas and... Um, uh, think of like um, releasing insulin. Uh, what's going to happen is that we're going to have these secretory cells, secre secretory cells, they secrete in, um, signals. They're going to release these local local regulators. So in this example, growth factors via exocytosis. And the target cell is going to absorb these local, regula re local regulators through endocytosis, bringing in materials, bringing out materials. Endo bringing in, exo bringing out. With synaptic signaling, this is going to involve the nervous system and our nerve cells. So think of like a neuron. The local regulators in this case will be neurotransmitters. And we're going to have a short space, the synaptic cleft. You don't need to know like what a synaptic cleft is, but we're going to have this short space where the neurotransmitters are going to have to travel from one cell to the other. And so we can see that there's no cell right here. It's just free extracellular space. Next is our, our last one is going to be long distance signaling, long distance, long distance signaling um, with plants and animal cells. They use hormones. Hormones are key, key concept right here. Horm hormones are nonpolar. I can't speak today. Um, they are hydrophilic, phobic. They are hydrophobic. They do not like water and they are also lipids, which means Think about it. Can they go across the cell membrane easily? Yes or no? Think about it real quick. Yes, they can pass through the cell membrane pretty easily. Cell membrane easily. With plant cells, they're going to release hormones that could either travel through their vascular tissue. Think of like their circulatory system or through the air to reach target tissues. And so plants can release horm uh, pheromones, which are like smells or, or odors filled with, um, filled with hormones that can alert some, part, some other part of the cell, like, oh, you should probably close your flowers. Hey, you should release this um, toxic smell so that we don't get eaten. Or it can alert other nearby plants as well. With animal cells, um, animal cells are going to utilize the endocrine system, which is going to regulate the hormones of the entire body. And so when you're going through puberty, this is when your body's cranking out tons of estrogen or testosterone based off your sex, your assigned sex. Testosterone? Uh, that's not how you spell it, but you get the point. Um, 
And what's going to happen in the endocrine system is that we're going to have specialized cells that will release these hormones into the circulatory system where they will reach target cells. What does that look like? So one example is insulin. Um, we're going to have our endocrine cells right here. They're going to be filled with um, these red dots. These are going to be our these are going to be our regulators or our hormones. And we're going to see that via exocytosis, we are releasing these um, hormones into the blood vessel, into the blood, into the, into the blood. And it's going to travel through the blood. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. It's going to go to your arm, your leg, go through the heart, eventually until it hits that target cell. And it's going to enter the target cell via endocytosis. Next, we're going to be talking about how the res how cells will actually respond to these signals. So this was just like the actual physical work. And now we're going to start talking about the chemical work behind this in the next video.